One of the best things about the home releases of Marvel movies is that they almost always come with a gag reel. Here's some examples of Marvel movie bloopers we think might even be better than the original scenes. In 2004 Spider-Man 2, Peter Parker isn't finding young adulthood easy. He may have superpowers and genius-level intellect, but the challenge of juggling college, multiple jobs, a social life, and fighting crime as Spider-Man is proving too much for him. In one of the many scenes meant to show how Parker is struggling, he drops his textbooks and as he kneels down to retrieve them, multiple passing students whack him in the head with their bags. The movie's gag reel shows us one take when things went even worse for Parker. Although thankfully McGuire has a good sense of humor about it. Shortly after Parker is hit from behind by one student's bag, he's hit by another from the front. A prompt shows us the second student is none other than the director of the first Spider-Man film trilogy, Sam Raimi. Although the extended battering of Peter would have definitely made the finished scene funnier, perhaps Raimi decided that choking his lead actor with a backpack was going a little too far. On the Avengers gag reel, Mark Ruffalo proves himself to either have a wealth of underutilized slapstick comedy potential or to simply be the clumsiest actor on just about any superhero movie set you could find. In the middle of filming one of his lab scenes with Robert Downey Jr., Ruffalo calls for the crew to wait while he resets a prop, which proves easier said than done. Careful, actor. Sorry. I got it, don't worry. It's okay, it's coming. While this clumsiness actually would have worked well for Bruce Banner's character, it may have been a little too silly for the high-stakes world of the Avengers. Dude, you're on your own! <laughs> In what the Avengers Blu-ray calls Marvel's first ever gag reel, it's clear that director Joss Whedon's trademark sense of humor infected the entire cast. No but Whedon's not the only one who gets to make you laugh. As S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Maria Hill, Kobe Smulders, doesn't get to flex her comedy muscles in the MCU as often as she did on How I Met Your Mother. However, she makes up for it with what's arguably the funniest moment in the Avengers bloopers. Pretending to react to the news of Phil Coulson's death, Smulders has what we'll call a dramatic reaction. Coulson, no! Oh God! <laughs> you are the greatest man I ever knew! We can't in good conscience pretend Maria Hill's over-the-top meltdown would have fit into the actual movie, but there's no denying it would have been hilarious. The first time Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor meet in the Avengers, things don't go that well. The Thunder God kidnaps Loki from the Quinjet, prompting Iron Man to fly after him. Intending to follow him, Cap grabs a parachute and jumps out of the plane. But in the gag reel, things went a little differently. On the reel, Chris Evans still grabs the parachute, but has absolutely no idea how to get the thing on. He struggles with it for so long that it gets to the point where you start to genuinely feel bad for the guy. I guess it doesn't really go up as smoothly as I was hoping. While it would have taken away from the intensity of the scene, showing this in the finished film might actually have made sense for the character. After all, the last time Steve Rogers used a parachute was decades earlier, and the design could have significantly changed since World War II. Seeing Steve struggle with his modern parachute could have been yet another amusing reminder that although you can take the captain out of the 1940s, you can't take the 1940s out of the captain. In one of the funnier moments of 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy, Michael Rooker's Yondu chooses a unique intimidation tactic. While the broker tries to explain why he can't give Yondu the information he wants, Yondu keeps interrupting him with gibberish. While this is already humorous in the movie, in the gag reel, it ventures into the realm of the absurd, as Rooker just keeps going. Behind him, you can even see co-star Sean Gunn trying hard not to laugh in a few takes. Sure, we think the finish scene is funny enough, but adding in Rooker's extended gibberish monologue would have taken it to the next level. Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell have a few things in common. They both hit their fame sweet spots in the 1980s, they both appear in 2017's Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, and both get frustrated on the sequel's gag reel trying to spit out Guardians-specific names. The gag reel shows that while playing the Ravager leader Stakar, Stallone had a lot of trouble nailing down the word Ravager. 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 Ravager? What am I saying? Ravager. No! Ravager. Yes! Oh, forget it. I'll see you in looping. Meanwhile, Kurt Russell has trouble saying his son's codename. As he camps with the Guardians, Russell says, 
Well, even where I reside, out past the edge of what's known, we've heard tell about the man they call Star Wars. Of course, we all know the name he really means to say is... Star-Lord. Who? Well, Star-Lord, man. Legendary outlaw? Russell immediately realizes his mistake and eventually manages to get his son's name right. However, leaving in the actor's mistakes could have added a bit to the respective scenes. Showing Stakar pronouncing Ravagers differently than Yandu could have highlighted the division between the two of them. And the fact that Ego keeps getting his kid's name mixed up with that of a popular Earth movie franchise could underscore what a horrible father he is. Well, of course I have issues! Oh, that's my freaking father! The scenes set in the dystopian future of 2014's X-Men Days of Future Past have a pretty bleak tone, so it almost feels wrong that the movie even has a gag reel. But it's good that it does, since the outtakes are pretty hilarious. Among other funny bits, the gag reel includes a ridiculous alternate version of a deleted scene. Before time traveling to the past to prevent the dystopian future in which the Sentinels have hunted mutants to near extinction, Wolverine turns to Storm. After confirming that he'll be the only one to remember this version of the future, he gives his teammate a long kiss. Although the scene is likely supposed to end there, Halle Berry follows it up with an unexpected reaction in the gag reel. Although Barry's response to the kiss would have broken the bleak mood, the kiss itself may have been a nice addition to the finished film. On the other hand, sharing a kiss with Storm earlier in the film might have made seeing her right before Wolverine's emotional reunion with the previously deceased Jean Grey at the end of the film slightly more awkward. As far as MCU movies go, 2016's Captain America Civil War is pretty intense. The final throwdown between the warring heroes gets ugly, but thankfully, one of the architects of Marvel Comics shows up toward the end to not only deliver an important package to Tony Stark, but to make sure we get in a few laughs. In one of his many beloved Marvel cameos, the late Stan Lee shows up to the Avengers headquarters as a FedEx driver, delivering the package that contains a letter from Steve Rogers along with an emergency contact phone. In the finished product, Lee accidentally misreads the name of the recipient, much to Rhodey's delight. Are you Tony Stank? Yes, this is, this is Tony Stank. You're in the right place. Thank you for that! However, the film's gag reel shows a take where Lee says something else, and we're not sure if he did it on purpose or if it was a legitimate goof. Are you Robert Stank? While the original scene was hilarious, fusing the mispronunciation of the character's last name with the actor's real-life first name could have been a fun fourth wall-breaking moment. It even would have made an odd sort of sense, considering that Marvel has officially canonized the popular fan theory that Lee is playing a watcher in all of his cameos. The blooper reel on the home release for 2016's Deadpool makes it clear that several of the actors frequently veered off script. Deadpool's gag reel includes a wealth of completely improvised lines, particularly from Ryan Reynolds and his co-star T.J. Miller. For example, when Miller's weasel first sees Wade Wilson's scarred face, the comedian unleashes a torrent of improvised takedowns, expressing his disgust at his friend's new appearance. You look like somebody turned your face inside out and then just left it like that, but then you got in a house fire. God, you look like a house fire was in another house fire. Meanwhile, Reynolds' own improv includes a long list of jabs toward Gina Carano's Angel Dust. Leave me all alone here with Busta Rhymes? You're gonna leave me all alone here with Henry Winkler? You're gonna leave me all alone here with Hey, you guys! Hilariously, the reel shows that the line that made it into the theatrical release ticked Carano off so much, she gave Reynolds an actual punch to the face as a reward. Sorry, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> Mother. While it's true that putting all of Miller's and Reynolds' improvised outtakes into the finished film probably wouldn't have worked from a pacing perspective, we wouldn't have minded giving each of them an opportunity to riff just a little bit longer in each of these scenes. One of the most delightful parts of 2018's Deadpool 2 is Wade Wilson's corrective time romp during the mid-credits scenes. Deadpool uses Cable's repaired time travel device to save his girlfriend and his X-Force teammate Peter, prevent the making of the 2011 film Green Lantern, and cut short the action of 2009's X-Men Origins Wolverine. But while Negasonic Teenage Warhead has a surprisingly easy time fixing the device, Deadpool has a tough time grabbing a hold of it. 
On the gag reel, we learned that it took Ryan Reynolds at least four takes to catch the device without dropping it. Considering how ridiculous the Deadpool films tend to be, we can't help but wonder if the main character repeatedly fumbling the time travel device might have actually played well in the film. Maybe Wade could have even capped the moment with his signature slogan. Maximum effort. There's one little wonderful nugget about the making of the Star Wars prequels that fans of the franchise love, even if they aren't particularly fond of the films themselves. According to Ewan McGregor, the Obi-Wan Kenobi actor would regularly make the lightsaber sound effects with his mouth during fight scenes. To begin with, it was quite difficult not to make the sound. Yeah. And also when it goes away, because it makes that nice noise when it goes down. Well, according to the gag reel for 2017's Thor Ragnarok, McGregor isn't alone in accidentally trying to do the sound team's job for them. Kate Blanchett plays the death goddess Hela in Ragnarok, and the gag reel includes a few takes of different scenes in which Blanchett makes childlike sound effects to accompany the unleashing of her character's powers. Do I, I should make the noises with my mouth, should I? <laughs> The gag reel also reveals that Blanchett's fight scenes with co-star Chris Hemsworth offered other challenges. The Oscar-winning actress had a tough time dragging her co-star across the floor, as well as finding it tough to not hit Hemsworth for real. Sorry guys, I've been training for months, but I don't think I can lift that. Sure, maybe Hella wouldn't have been quite as intimidating if she was making her own sound effects and fumbling her fights with her super-powered siblings, but in a film filled with plenty of other visual and audible gags, including Blanchett's goofs, may not have felt entirely out of place. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite Marvel films are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.